Hello again YouTubers, I'm Colin and welcome to another episode of Tamiya Truck Building. In stages 33 and 34 I'm brush painting the rear light lenses and fitting the mud flaps or spray suppressant to give them their proper name to the chassis. But first, before we go into the build, Greg contacted me with a question. He said, some people swap out the metal bearings for ball bearings and did I have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I have. Um, I'm going to put up a diagram for you to have a look at while I talk. Um, there's three parts to this image. Uh, I'd like you to look at the lower right side to start with. That's a screen print from the FH12 manual of section 14. You may have a twin rear axle model. If you have, there's no difference, except instead of having four metal bearings in the assembly, you'll have eight. If you follow the large red arrow to the left, you can see the rear axle casing. These bearings are inside. There are no more bearings on the rear wheels, just hexagonal shaped plastic nuts as per the inset picture. These have matching spline cutouts to lock on the drive shafts. In addition to the four in the rear axle, there are a total of four in the front axle, two per wheel. If you look at the top left image and inset in blue. In summary then, there are eight of the MA3 solid bearings used on each axle in this build. Before I go further, I just wanted to mention there are some MA3 bearings in the gearbox. And I have read that to me, I don't recommend using a replacement ball bearing in the gearbox. Uh, but it's not something I have done, and so I can't really comment on that. Back to the wheels. Why swap metal bearings for ball bearings? Well, the ball bearings do provide less friction or drag than the solid metal MA3 bearings. There is no doubt about that. And there's no doubt that a free spinning wheel fitted with ball bearings will continue to rotate longer than one with solid bearings. I did say free spinning. If you think about it, only the front two wheels would really benefit from less drag as they are not powered. The rear wheels or axles are powered and their spinning will be controlled by the motor and your input. My point then is the motor is powerful and is not hindered at all by the supplied metal bearings. The front wheels will start and stop along with the rear wheels. So where's the benefit of using ball bearings? Here's the bottom line. The MA3 solid bearings do a very good job. Swapping them for ball bearings does lessen the drag on the front wheels a little. I've tried the ball bearings and in all honesty I can't see any performance enhancement from the swap. If you want to replace the bearings they are available online. The top right image shows a set of 16 Tamiya ball bearings. That's how they come in a set, not individually. As for my video build, the FH12 is being constructed on a budget and I am avoiding adding unnecessary costs. And to be honest, even if I wasn't doing a budget build, I wouldn't personally consider this upgrade. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks to Greg for the question. On to the build now. Stage 33. Just put up a diagram there, you can see the two rear light assemblies and the parts top left and we're going to start by painting the inside of the uh, light clusters which is with X11 chrome silver paint uh, which is always very very thick to start with needs a really really good stir I've speeded it up a bit here but actually spent about a minute and a half stirring this until it uh, loosens up completely and you've got no lumps in it. 
if you don't stir it you, you just get like an oil on the top of the paint and it really doesn't paint properly. Have a couple of bits of tissue with you, a dry one and a wet one. See the wet one in use in a minute. In terms of brushes, pick an appropriate brush for the size that you want. Don't try and get all of the paint on first go. It won't happen. Use your wet cloth to wipe off any paint that you don't want on any area. Bearing in mind that it's water soluble until it dries and it dries fairly quickly so don't leave it until you've done a lot before you wipe it off. There you go. That's the first coat. Now we're going to do the lenses which consists of two colours clear orange and clear red. I kind of think of them as transparent colours and I'm also using a, a very very small brush. I've marked out on the paper in front of me which parts need paint in which way so I'll get it right. Slow and careful is the way to do it. Rest your arm on the table is a Colin tip if you're not particularly steady. Or even do what I do which is rest fingers on top of fingers. Just stops any fingers, even the slightest shake is no good. Again, don't lather it on, just put a base coat. We will be putting a second coat on. All you're interested in doing this time is just getting that first coat on. And there's one orange segment on each side. Light down flat and it'll dry flat. Moving on to the red now. There are in fact three red sections on each side. No different to painting the amber colour. Just be careful how you do it. Paint gently into the corners. Don't try and put two coats on at once. It'll be a mess. And there we go. Having speeded it up, that's all six parts done. Back to stirring the silver paint again for the second coat. This time you can put it on a little bit more, a little bit heavier. And that applies to the ones on the lenses as well. Try not to rub it too much because even after two hours you can start to rub off the paint underneath. Don't forget your wet cloth over the top. I'm wiping the tops of these units because I've got to put glue on them for the lenses. And if it's got paint on there, it won't stick properly. There's a second one. Back to the colours again. Now this time, you can find, you can, pardon me, you can afford to put on a little bit more. You'll notice I'm putting a thicker coat on, and I'm going to put the lenses down flat onto the paper when I've finished, and those colours will dry flat. It might sound obvious to say this, but you're painting the inside of the lenses, not the outside which obviously gives you a nice flat finish. Rest your arm, as I say, on the desk, against your other hand. Helps to steady. These brushes are very cheap to buy and get yourself a set for about five or six pounds. And there we are. What we need to do now is mount the light assembly units to the metal brackets that fit on the side, fit on each side of the rear of the truck. Two screws, hold each one together. Now I'm going to use contact to clear. It's worth pointing out that 
as you can see in the image at the moment that in some models you will be fitting LEDs as well. I'm not actually fitting any in this model. So it's just a straightforward case of putting the units onto the metal brackets. Contact to clear I love. It doesn't dry brilliantly quickly. It does dry fine. But what I like about it is it doesn't leave any marks on the plastic at all. Very, very good stuff. Great for use with clear plastic windows, that kind of thing. There we go. Leave them overnight. Final part now will be to fix the mud flaps onto those brackets and they're held in place with two little screws and a piece of plastic. There are some transfers to go on the mud flaps but they're in stage 34 coming up next. We're now to stage 34 and right slap bang in the middle of the self adhesive transfers are the two white Volvo words that I want. One for each of the bottom of the mud flaps or spray suppressants as they're called in the trade. Trim off the majority of the clear outside. Little tip, I tend to use pointed nose pliers to put these on. Makes it easier to try and line them up. Sorry you can't see with my hand in the way. I find it harder to do some of these things on camera than not. If you're concentrating on trying to keep your hands out of the way as well at the same time so you can see what I'm doing. That's my excuse anyway. And the second word Volvo, there we go. What we'll have to do now is to fit these to the chassis. We've got the chassis upside down as per the diagram. And these are held on with two screws on each side. One of the two screws is a 3x8 self tapper. The other one, the one that I'm having a bit of fun with at the moment, is a 10 millimeter long 3 millimeter screw which screws into a bar which you'll see in a moment between the two chassis sides. As is always the case best to just put things together loosely to start with. If you go and do something up tight and it's out of alignment the piece the other side won't fit too easily. There we go, speed it up a bit. Now the self tapping screw and with the two screws on each side they will pull the light unit and mud flap into the correct position. Just tighten up the screws now. There you go. That's the end of stage 34. That's it for this episode, YouTubers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.